As arborists, rope is one of, if not our most important tools. We use it to climb with, lower limbs, lift limbs, pull trees over. As such, it's important for us to gain a better understanding of how rope is made and designed so that we can make the right choices and as such, use the right tool for the right job. I've asked Stanley Longstaff of RopeWorks to come and help us gain a better understanding of rope. Stanley's got a background in tree climbing and the marine industry and is probably one of the foremost splicers in the tree care industry today. Stan, good to see you. It's nice to see you too. Stanley, we're here looking at different types of rope and maybe you can help us gain a better understanding of how rope is made and designed to be used. Well, there's a, a lot of fibers available today to make rope in different constructions, either twisted or braided for a wide variety of end-use applications. Uh, nylon, the first synthetic fiber, also polyester, and then there are the so-called exotic fibers, very high strength, low stretch fibers, but we don't tend to use those very much. So what would you say is the best product for us in the tree care industry? I would say polyester. It balances strength, resistance to abrasion, energy absorption and elongation and it does not lose any strength when it gets wet and of course we work outside so that's a factor. Absolutely. Now there's a lot of different types of rope. Probably a good place to start is with the three strand construction. Yeah, three strand traditional uh, natural fiber were used to make uh, three strand rope just twisted around itself. Now we make it out of synthetic fibers as well. It's very uh, low, it's low strength high elongation, but it's easily spliceable, as you can see, and that's very important because we can put an eye in it to make a sling or to use on the end of a lowering line. Okay, and that's, that's good to know. Now, three-strand is, because it's very resistant to abrasion, it's good for natural crotch rigging as well as through a false that's crotch, true. wouldn't it? Yes. Okay, probably the next type of rope would be the 12-strand, also used for both climbing and lowering lines. Yeah, another good uh, example of a natural crotch uh, rigging rope and it's, it's stronger than three strand. It still has a substantial amount of stretch in it. Uh, it this cannot be spliced, so that's a one downside to it because it's nice to have an eye occasionally in the rope. Okay, uh, now you say it can't be spliced. Is that because of the tight braid? There really isn't an open space in the middle. There's basically two kinds of splice. There's a tuck splice, as in the three strand, where the strands just go over and under, and there's a berry splice, uh, as such as in the 16 strand rope. Okay, so the berry splice is in a 16 strand, and you can splice that with the 16 strand. Why? Because there's a core. Because there's a core in there, and when the core is taken out, there's a void where we can put the other part of the rope back in. That's right. 16 strands are primarily used for climbing lines. That's, that's true. Okay. Probably next in the line would be the double braid. Double braids become very popular. They're very strong. They have low stretch. Uh, it's really two ropes, isn't it? It's, yeah, there it's is. a braided rope within a rope. If you pull a core out of a double braid rope, you'll see that there is actually another braided rope inside. And the manufacturers, the rope makers, make these ropes so that they're balanced between the cover and the core to help share the load. But for natural crotch rigging, it can be a problem because of the friction in the crotch can tend to upset that balance and the core might take too much of a load and that could lead to problems. So really these should be used only in false crotch rigging yeah. while some of these others are, are better suited to both. Yeah, I would certainly say so. And as, as evidenced by this sling, double braids are spliceable. Yeah, it's a little more complicated but you can do it. Okay, now the next one we have is a hollow braid and I know there are a number of different types of hollow braids. Well, there's different strand construction hollow braid, but basically hollow braids are 12 strand construction. Sometimes have one end or two ends as we call them per strand. And a strand is anything that follows the same spiral path down the rope. But as you see in this, they're called hollow because you can really bird cage this up and there's a lot of space in there. So that, that's helpful in making it easier to splice, isn't oh, it? Oh, much so. It's a lot easier to splice than any other rope.